Today's project is this Hendredon dresser. Now, I spent a little bit more than I normally do on flips. Well, actually, a lot more. <laughs> I spent $365 on this dresser. I normally, for flips, I try to stay between $100 and $150. But it has all of the original hardware. It has no missing veneer. It has these dividers in the drawers. It's in excellent shape. This is a fabulous quality. Um, so I know I feel pretty confident that I can go ahead and sell it for a higher price just to justify it. So I thought, well, what am I going to do with it? It's in really good shape. It doesn't really need a full refinish. Um, and dark wood is so in. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try toning it. So I use general finishes, their protocol for toning. I use their gel stain. So the protocol is you clean it. Um, you give it a scuff sand with a high grit of sandpaper and then you're going to clean it with a 50 50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water and that's just going to kind of get any other contaminants that you can't see off of the wood then i'm going to apply gel stain i'm going to start with nutmeg it's a nice kind of a it's a brown but it has a little bit brightness to it and we're going to see if it'll kind of brighten up and refresh this wood so if i like it great i'll just stay there and i'll seal it and if not if i don't like it well then i can move on and just strip it from there so Let's try toning first. I think that's a great way to start, especially since I paid a little bit more for this. I wanna be careful not to invest too much time into it. So let's see, let's try toning. Here we go. I love working on campaign furniture. So, you know, this was in pretty good shape overall. Um, towards the bottom, you can see I had some damage that I'm gonna have to try to fill in. I'll use the gel stain and then I'll have to come back through and use some of the Mohawk blend all sticks. But you can see I'm just gonna have to do a little cleaning up. So I'm gonna dive right in and go ahead and give it a really good clean and then I'll move on to scuff sanding. So for scuff sanding, I use 220. Now on the protocol for general finishes, they recommend 150 to 180. Um, I, I don't know, 150 seems a little coarse because you don't wanna break through the finish. I'm just kind of scuffing it up, I'm etching it up so that I can actually have something that the gel stain can grip to. So I start with 220. If I need to go lower in an area, then I will. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my denatured alcohol. I'm gonna do half denatured alcohol and half water. And then I'm going to clean the entire surface. This is gonna help get any kind of hidden contaminants, whether it be grease or anything like that, that's uh, maybe some buildup of furniture polish. You wanna make sure all of that gets off. So the scuff sanding and then this cleaning really helps get any of those contaminants off. And then that way you have a really good finish once you apply the gel stain.
Okay, when I was scuff sanding, I came across one little area that had some veneer that was kind of pulling off on the corner. So one thing I wanted to mention is when you're toning, you really don't want to try to go down to raw wood because then the gel stain is going to take differently. You'll have to do some type of repair if you go down to raw wood. So uh, what I'm going to do in this particular instance is I'm going to put in some dark walnut wood filler and then I'll put the gel stain over that. And then if I need to, I'll do some correction with like some blend all sticks or veneer repair kit. So um, just wanted to let you know, all you're really doing, I use 220 to scuff up. You're just basically etching up the surface so that the gel stain has something to stick to. That's really all you're doing. You're just etching it up. So you don't want to sand so much that you're going to raw or you're going to have a patchy finish. That's not what you want when you're toning. We're just going over an existing finish to just slightly change the color and deepen it, refresh in the wood. But this is really toning is for a project or for a piece that is in really good shape already. You don't want to have all these scuffs and major dings um, or major gouges. It's for just changing the color of something. That's what toning is. So you don't want to try to go down to raw wood. Don't get crazy on your sanding. 220, if you do have an area that you've got raw wood, just know you're going to have to probably do some repairs. Now that all of that protocol is done, I'm ready to actually apply the gel stain. I am using General Finishes gel stain in the color Nutmeg. It's a beautiful brown, it's kind of, you can see it's already kind of brightening up that color. Um, it's beautiful. You just simply wipe it on and then you wipe off the excess. It's really rather magical. You can see on some of the areas that had some um, lightness to it, I had some finish um, that was coming off. You can see it just fills in those areas really well. Now, I will have to come back with some blend all sticks, but this is gonna give me a really good base to start with. Okay, this is where you're really going to see some magic. Can you believe that gel stain? It just fills in all that area. It's just reviving that wood. Now see, gel stain sits on top of the wood. It's not penetrating. So that's why you can apply it this way without having to take the finish off because it just sits on top of the existing finish. So you can see it's just filling in any areas there that need to be refreshed.
I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat on the base because it did need a lot of extra help. And then I'll move on to the blend all sticks. Now I'm going to use the Blend All Six. These are by Mohawk and they come in a variety of colors and you just simply apply them, kind of rub them with your thumb and then you have to seal it with a, their, it's called Easy Vinyl Sealer. So you just seal it and then let it dry, come back and continue to layer your color. So you'll see, I'm just going to work on a variety of different areas. So I'll apply a base color and then I'm going to move on to another area and then I'm gonna come back to it after the sealer has dried. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way around the dresser, filling in as much as I can.
Yesterday I did all of my corrections with my blend all sticks and it is looking really good. So this morning I'm gonna to try to go ahead and seal it. Now, um, to use an oil-based sealer, it's really hard to clean up. So I found this little siphon feed sprayer. I used to use a critter, which don't laugh. People use them to paint too, um, but um, it's just really easy to clean up because it comes through this tube you only have to take off this screw. This is the only thing you have to clean. So you, it's really easy if you're using like bin shellac, which any kind of solvent base that you have to use like denatured alcohol, mineral spirits or something to clean up. And it's a metal can, this one. And so it's real easy to clean up. So I'm gonna try that one. I'll have it linked in the descriptions. I'll let you know if it works. And then I'll have this one linked too. This is one of my new favorite oil um, based polyurethanes. And so this is a ultra, I'm sorry, warm ultra flat. And I really love it. I've used it on a few projects so far and it oil always provides a really durable um, finish. And um, sometimes uh, water base can look a little plasticky. And so that's why sometimes I do like to use oil based um, products but um, they are messier to clean up. That's why I'm trying the easier spray gun. This is like, I don't know, it was like $17. So I figured that's a pretty good experiment. I used to like the critters and they have gotten, I guess they've stopped manufacturing them because I can't find them anymore. But that was the one that was in the mason jar. And so um, anyway, I'm gonna see if this one works. We'll give it a go, see if I like it. Um, and then if I don't like it, we'll switch gears, but let's try it. I had a few problems with the top coat and um, I don't know what happened initially. Um, I just had these like little spots on there. So I had to go ahead and sand it down and I'm gonna use my Erlex 5700 to go ahead and do a second coat. Um, what I found out later is because they did it one more time on one drawer is that actually it wasn't my initial sprayer. I was just applying it too thickly. So anytime I went over and did like an extra pass somewhere, it just, it built up too much and then it wouldn't dry. And then it kind of like pooled there. So I just need to be really careful not to apply. I need to just do thinner coats. So for my drawers, I'm gonna just go ahead and refresh them with some Danish oil. It just gives a nice little natural finish. And then I'm going to reapply the hardware that I've already cleaned all up and hand polished. All right, let's look back at the before. It was in pretty good shape. Obviously towards the bottom, I had quite a bit of um, veneer issues that I needed to fill in. And it was just kind of a dull finish. But after a little bit of gel stain and a lot of correction with my blend all sticks, here is the finished product. What do you think? I think it turned out really good. I definitely think that the gel stain brightened the finish. And, and what do you think of that matte finish? I, I'm really loving a matte finish. I just think it makes it look high end. It makes it look a little bit more modern. I mean, it has just a tiny bit of sheen to it. So it's not completely flat, but just beautiful. Enjoy some of these videos and I'll come back at the end.
So overall, I was really pleased. I think it turned out really well. Um, for the time investment, I just spent a few hours on the refinish, but I'm really pleased with it. I am going to list it on Etsy, so I'll let you know in the community tab what I end up selling it for. But thanks so much for watching, and let me know what you think about this one in the comments.